Content warning. The following files contain sensitive information on the topics of transphobia, gender dysphoria, bullying, abuse, suicide, and transgender experiences. Do not continue reading if these subjects are triggering to you. Good afternoon, recruits. I'm Dr. Reza, and I will be leading your lecture today. Part of being a member of the Foundation is not just the research as is led by the O5 Council, but also by adhering to the rulings of the Ethics Committee. I have gotten a very interesting file to present to you today regarding a ruling of the Ethics Committee, and I hope you all find it as interesting as I do. Today, we will be reviewing SCP-6113 and the related Ethics Report. SCP-6113, Containment Class, Esoteric, Secondary Class, Multiple, Disruption Class, Tenkyo, with a Risk Class of Warning. This is a Level 2 Restricted Access File. Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-6113-1 and SCP-6113-2 is not possible at the present moment. Containment efforts of SCP-6113 are primarily focused on the suppression of information surrounding it. The following special containment procedures for SCP-6113 have been implemented. Spread disinformation surrounding SCP-6113-1 and SCP-6113-2 by Foundation web crawlers and planted agents in an attempt to discredit any reported sightings and transition event. See file 6113-2. Locate and detain transgender individuals affected by SCP-6113, henceforth referred to as subjects and hold them for questioning for no more than one week. Update and modify any and all legal records of subjects to reflect their current sex and gender identity. Apply Class A and E amnestics to subjects and any family, friends, and acquaintances, as well as implanting false memories as if the subject were assigned their gender at birth. Released subjects are monitored for one month to ensure complacency. These procedures have been effective at maintaining global normality. However, SCP-6113 continues to affect subjects at an average rate of four subjects per seven days. The number of subjects affected by SCP-6113 total over 243 as of 5-11-2019. The Department of Thaumaturgy is currently developing a permanent containment method for SCP-6113. Despite numerous potential subjects employed at the Foundation, SCP-6113-1 refuses to enter Foundation property and conduct transition events on personnel. Testing on D-Class personnel, locating, tracking, and studying SCP-6113-1, and locating SCP-6113-2 is not possible at the present. SCP-6113 is the designation for multiple objects of varying class labeled SCP-6113-1 through SCP-6113-3, refer to the individual files below. We are now going to be accessing file 6113-1. Containment class, Heater. Secondary class, Uncontained. Disruption class, Tenkyo and Risk Class Caution. Special Containment Procedures As of writing, SCP-6113-1 
has not been contained. In the event of its sighting, Mobile Task Force Lambda 69, the Six Colored Crusaders, is to respond and follow standard humanoid apparition and Gallagher Bender containment protocols in an attempt to contain it. The Department of Thaumaturgy has yet to develop a conclusive containment method for SCP-6113-1. Description SCP-6113-1 is a humanoid entity capable of teleportation and disguising as and impersonating human beings. SCP-6113-1 uses its abilities to facilitate transition events in transgender individuals globally. See file 6113-2. Current prevailing theory suggests SCP-6113-1 is a humanoid spirit or reality vendor, but its true nature is unknown. SCP-6113-1 typically reveals itself to subjects at their lowest moment in life. See Addendum 6113.1, Subject Testimony. When doing so, it disguises itself as a person the subject shares a positive emotional bond with, such as a family member, friend, significant other, or teacher, henceforth referred to as companion. Using information about the subject's personal life and relationship to the companion, it guides the subject to SCP-6113-2 with its teleportation abilities. Subjects do not notice the moment of teleportation, as if they had continuously walked to the destination. How SCP-6113-1 obtains knowledge of the subject's life, the personality of the companion, and their relationship to the companion is unknown, but is theorized to be a form of mind reading. SCP-6113-1 has also been observed to protect subjects from all physical harm, self-induced or otherwise, for a short time before and after appearing to them, possess intimate knowledge about the subject's personal life, mental health, and relationships and exude a feeling of calmness and comfort. Additionally, it is also theorized that SCP-6113-1 can become invisible so as to reveal itself to the subject at the right moment. SCP-6113-1 has not demonstrated any new abilities since its discovery on March 20th, 2019 but it may or may not possess any more. Now we are going to be moving on to file 6113-2. Containment class, esoteric. Secondary class, uncontained. Disruption class, thank you. And risk class, warning. Special containment procedures. As of writing, SCP-6113-2 has not been contained. Due to its passive nature and contradictory con descriptions, containment efforts are low priority compared to containing SCP-6113-1. If an opportunity to locate and contain SCP-6113-2 presents itself, Mobile Task Force Lambda-69, the Six Color Crusaders, and the Department of Anomalous Locations are to respond and contain SCP-6113-2. Description SCP-6113-2 is a natural freshwater lake somewhere on Earth at an unknown location. Descriptions of SCP-6113-2 are inconsistent and contradictory. However, most subjects recall a lake consistent with that of forested areas in the Midwest region of the United States. SCP-6113-2 is the destination for SCP-6113-1, 
and its subjects when conducting transition events. A transition event can only occur when SCP-6113-1, no more than one subject, and SCP-6113-2 are within each other's presence. The steps of a transition are as follows. See Addendum 6113.3, Subject Testimony. SCP-6113-1 reveals itself to the subject, disguised as the subject's companion, protecting them from physical harm if necessary. In most cases, this happens alone. It is unclear whether it teleports directly or becomes visible. SCP-6113-1 calms and comforts the subject. Subjects do not question why their companion is suddenly accompanying them, as if this is completely normal. SCP-6113-1 suggests they go for a walk, guiding them to a lake. To the subject, the apparent environment morphs to match a theoretical path to SCP-6113-2, as if it were within walking distance. Only the subject perceives this. The actual physical locations remain unchanged. These hallucinations could also be the cause of the varying descriptions of SCP-6113-2. Again, subjects do not question this. SCP-6113-1 engages in conversation with the subject about their personal life, offers the subject a seat at the edge of the lake, sitting with them. Topics have included school grades, relationships, and future plans. At some point, the conversation topic naturally shifts to that of gender identity and gender dysphoria, which is a term for psychological distress caused by an incongruence between one's sex assigned at birth and their gender identity, or gender euphoria, which is a euphoric feeling at presenting with a gender identity other than the gender assigned at birth. SCP-6113-1 then prompts the subject to view their reflection in the lake, when subjects view their reflection in the water, they first see themselves as is. Slowly, the reflection and physical body of the subject will permanently shift until matching their ideal gender. The sex characteristics and chromosomes of the subject are primarily affected. This process is similar to that of SCP-113, but notably Hamian. Then the subject expresses a strong emotional reaction, most often excitement and joy, but sometimes anxiety and fear, in which SCP-6113-1 responds appropriately. SCP-6113-1 then guides the subject back to their original location, saying goodbye before leaving either by teleportation or invisibility. Subjects that have underwent a transition event, though occasionally possessing atypical anatomy for humans of a binary sex, are not anomalous. Transition events do not significantly alter a subject's height, weight, and features that are not related to transitioning. Subjects also report feeling more confident and determined to improve the quality of their life. Addendum 6113.1 Discovery On the 4th of March, 2019, reports of subjects suddenly and perfectly changing sex characteristics without the need for medical procedures and hormone replacement therapy begin circulating on local news and social media. Only three days later did these reports capture the attention of the Foundation. Before discovery, 126 subjects had been affected by SCP-6113. Addendum 6113.2 Initial Containment Efforts On the 20th of March, 2019, 
several mobile task forces were deployed as the Department of Public Disinformation works to discredit any reports of SCP-6113-1, SCP-6113-2, and its effects on subjects. During the initial containment efforts, subjects were detained and brought to nearby low-security Foundation facilities. Subjects were held for no more than one week. During this time, they were questioned about SCP-6113-1 and SCP-6113-2, while records and legal documents, such as birth certificates, passports, and driver's licenses, were updated to reflect their current gender. Before being released, subjects were given Class A and F amnestics. Any family, friends, and acquaintances of the subject were given Class E amnestics. Both subjects and associates were given false memories, as if the subject were assigned their current gender at birth. Addendum 6113.3 Subject Testimony Over 243 subject testimonies have been collected since discovery. These testimonies are the basis for our understanding of SCP-6113. Notable testimonies are summarized below. Subject, Sen Yu Zhen, age 20. Subject, while in university in the United States, came out to her parents who live in Incheon, South Korea, over a phone call. Subject's parents were unaccepting and transphobic, threatening to disown her if she transitioned. Subject was distraught for several hours. SCP-6113-1, disguised as her boyfriend, appeared to the subject. Notably, subject's boyfriend was out of state at the time. Noah Kita, age 46. Subject was laid off from his job recently and was not able to afford rent. Subject, his husband, and his two children struggled financially. Faced with eviction, SCP-6113-1 appeared to the subject, disguised as his father. Subject, Charlotte Young, age 87. Subject's wife died recently, which left her depressed for several months after. SCP-6113-1, disguised as her wife at a younger age, appeared for the subject when she found a photograph of the couple. Subject was also apparently made younger during her transition event. This effect did not last after the event. Subject, Athena Chan, age 13. Subject was in extreme emotional distress after continued transphobic harassment. Subject attempted suicide in the bathroom by slitting both wrists. The razor blade could not break her skin. Frustrated, subject threw the razor blade across the room and collapsed, crying. SCP-6113-1, disguised as her older sister, appeared in the bathroom to comfort her. Notably, the bathroom has no windows and only one door. As you can tell, this is an interesting SCP, although I might be a bit biased in my own interest towards it. The SCP itself is not what we are focusing on today, though. The following file is level 3 slash 6113 3 classified. And as such, I had to get you all a special clearance from the Ethics Committee to present this file to you today. Any attempt to access this file without level 3 slash 6113 3 authorization will be logged and will lead to immediate disciplinary action. Let me just put in my credentials real quick here. And here we are. SCP-6113-3. Containment class, Euclid. Secondary class, Eparch. Disruption class, dark. Risk class, notice. Special containment procedures. 
SCP-6113-3 is kept in a standard humanoid containment cell at Site-17. The site researcher for SCP-6113, currently Dr. James Park, is to act as SCP-6113-3's social worker, responsible for SCP-6113-3's well-being, as well as their normal duties. SCP-6113-3 is to receive a standard education by Foundation educators up until the 12th grade, while SCP-6113-3 is non-anomalous. Standard humanoid containment protocol is in effect. In exchange for continued cooperation and good behavior, SCP-6113-1 is allowed limited socialization privileges with approved site personnel of level 3 or higher, as well as access to approved on-site entertainment activities and weekly visits to the Site 17 courtyard supervised by one project member of level 36113 or higher. Request for personal items and containment modifications within reason may also be granted upon approval by the SCP-6113 researcher. To date, SCP-6113-3 has requested a personal laptop. Denied. A personal smartphone. Denied. A Nintendo Switch console with various games. Granted. Personalized meals from the Site 17 cafeteria. Denied. Various snacks and beverages on request. Initially denied, then granted. With a final judgment be an overrule by the site director, having the request denied. Release from containment, denied. Once SCP-6113-3 reaches the age of 18 in 2025, preparations are to be made for her to be amnesticized and release in accordance with the Reintegration Committee. Description. SCP-6113-3, known as formally is a non-anomalous female human of Filipino descent. Records indicate SCP-6113-3 was born on 2007, making her 12 years old. She is 152 centimeters tall and weighs 50 kilograms, and it's generally healthy. SCP-6113-3 was one of several subjects of SCP-6113 assigned male at birth. SCP-6113-3 considers herself a transgender female and uses the pronouns she, her. Despite SCP-6113-3 being completely non-anomalous. Her containment is necessary out of altruism by order of the Ethics Subcommittee for Humanoid Entities due to the nature of her discovery. Addendum 6113-3.1 Discovery, Personal Background, and Reason for Containment SCP-6113-3 was discovered on the 20th of March, 2019, in the San Diego, California Stillwater Hospital system, when baffled doctors and nurses attempted to treat the effects of her transition event. A child abuse report to Child Protective Services had also been filed by the Jefferson family and the hospital. Before SCP-6113-3's containment, the Jefferson family and hospital staff were questioned to confirm her condition. However, the Jeffersons were mistakenly amnesticized due to a miscommunication before SCP-6113-3 could be returned. Hospital records, legal records, and the CPS report were expunged from all databases. 
SCP-6113-3 faced emotional and verbal abuse by her biological parents, George and Victoria. She lacked friends and would often face bullying at school. SCP-6113-3 would frequently visit her friend Alina Jefferson, as well as her parents Damien and Ree Jefferson. SCP-6113-3 would accompany the Jeffersons to their family lake house at what is believed to be SCP-6113-2. After being expelled from her home, SCP-6113-3 came to the Jeffersons, with whom she was discovered. George and Victoria were not amnesticized, however. Three days into SCP-6113-3's week-long holding period, during which she was uncooperative, the following memo was sent to Site Director Thomas Graham. Ethics Committee Memo Date 23rd of March, 2019 To Site Director Thomas Graham from Ethics Committee Liaison Jeremiah Chimerian Subject SCP-6113 Subject number 126 Graham, we've been watching the SCP-6113 situation closely. With hundreds of civilian subjects passing through our facilities, it is our duty to confirm that they are being treated ethically. One of these subjects at your facility has captured our attention. SCP-6113, subject number 126. I am sure you have read her file. Nevertheless, according to the report, she was recently expelled from her home and faced homelessness. In the chaos, it seems the Jefferson family has already been amnesticized by mistake, despite their kindness. Returning subject number 126 would be difficult as the reason for her expulsion has already been cleared from the Jefferson's memory, and returning her to her biological parents is a non-starter. Under any other circumstances, we would not have interfered. However, this was a massive oversight on the field agent's part. As a consequence of their maleficence, we have deemed it unethical to release subject number 126 into civilian life. We cannot accept her ending up homeless in foster care or dead. Therefore, she has been designated SCP-6113-3 and will be held at Site-17 until the age of 18. She is under your care now. Draft containment procedures appropriately. We will be checking on her regularly. Any faults found in her care can and will fall on you. Ethics Committee Liaison Jeremiah Chimerian signing off. Addendum 6113-3.2 Interviewed Log 1 Interviewed SCP-6113-3 Interviewer Dr. James Park Forward Earliest recorded interview with SCP-6113-3, conducted four days after acquisition. <clears throat> Beginning log, uh, 24th of March, 2019. Dr. Park enters the interview room and sits down. SCP-6113-3 sits with her knees to her chest, staring dejectedly ahead. She does not acknowledge him. Hello, uh, SCP-6113-3. My name is uh, Dr. James Park. I'll be managing your stay with us in the Foundation. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've been briefed by my team, yes? Not much for words right now. That, that's okay. We have plenty of time. I just have some questions for you. Is that all right with you? All 
right. Um, <clears throat> so, do you remember what prompted SCP-6113-1 to bring you to SCP-6113-2? According to what you told the Jefferson family, uh, Alina, that, that's uh, dash one to us, brought you to a lake and suddenly you were a girl? A uh, majority of the subjects we interviewed claimed dash one appears only at their lowest moment. I just want to know what that was for you. A moment of silence was omitted for brevity. Would you rather we do this another time? SCP-6113-3. Don't be afraid to say no. Like I said, we have plenty of time. SCP-6113-3 nods. Great. Another time, then. End log. Closing statement. SCP-6113-3 was led back to a containment cell without a word or incident. Another interview was scheduled for one week later. Interview Log 2 SCP-6113-3 was observed exhibiting the same behavior as the previous interview. Hello, SCP-6113-3. Do, do you feel up to the interview now? SCP-6113-3 nods slightly. Great. Do you mind telling me, SCP- Why do you keep calling me that? I'm sorry? SCP-6113-3 it's all anyone has called me. My name is <laughs> fucking. Uh, well, uh, do, do you see this logo on my paper? What about it? That's the logo of the SCP Foundation. It it um. It stands for Secure, Contain, Protect. There are certain things that the world shouldn't know about. It could be a deadly monster, a portal to another world, even a pen that does its job too well. Uh, anything that is deemed anomalous. E either way, we make sure no one discovers them. If anyone finds out what we do and what we have, some very bad things will happen. Whatever it is, or whoever it is, we contain it and assign it a number, just like you. And when do I get to go? Not until you're at least 18. Oh. Let's continue this another time. End of log. Closing statement. Dr. Park elected to postpone the interview questions until an established relationship with SCP-6113-3 could be made. Addendum 6113-3.4 Interview Log 3 Forward Interview conducted impromptu in SCP-6113-3's containment cell. Begin Log 0205 2019.
Dr. Park is allowed access to the containment cell by a guard. Hello. Hi, sir. Oh, just, just James is fine. Listen, I'm here to explain why you're here. It's the least you deserve. You don't have to say anything. You just have to listen. Okay. James. The following data was omitted for brevity. What the fuck? Do you need time to process that? SCP-6113-3 nods silently. I'm not dangerous, though. Why... Why do you want me here? Why can't I go back? You said I'm basically normal. You're not dangerous, but the circumstances that led you here are. You weren't in a good place when we found you. And you have information about Dash 2 we can use. <gasps> what about Damien? Bree? F fucking Alina, does she know where I am? They don't know you exist. Their memories were wiped. It would have been a security risk if we didn't. It was out of my control. You, you piece of shit! Get out! Get out! Dr. Park stands up and is led out of the cell by the guard. I'm sorry. End of log. SCP-6113-3 was observed in distress for several hours after Interview 3. Interviews intended to gather information of SCP-6113-1 and SCP-6113-2 have been indefinitely postponed. Interview Log 4 SCP-6113-3 refused to leave her containment cell for further interviews. By order of Dr. James Park, her privileges were not threatened in exchange for compliance. During the two weeks between interviews, SCP-6113-3 had significantly calmed. Interview 4 was instead conducted in her containment cell. Begin Log, 1605-2019. Dr. Park is allowed access to the containment cell by a guard. Fucker. How are you too? Now you're suddenly interested, huh? I thought all you wanted was what I knew about Dash 2. And you're getting nothing. You hear me? Dr. Park sits down at the foot of her bed. Look. I've postponed those questions. You won't hear them until you're ready. Uh-huh. Sure. I'm here because I want to know who is. Why? To put it matter-of-factly, it helps neither of us if I don't even know who you are. If anything, I can at least make your time here more comfortable? Fine. Great. Where do you want me to start? Tell me anything I should know, Chloe. Hobbies? Interests? Likes? Dislikes? 
how well I would I'd go on hikes a lot before here I'd cook a lot at least when I was allowed to I like the woods and outdoors I hate fake people dude I don't know what do you want from me I want to know what you would like while you're here. What I would like? You want to know what I would like? Well, I would like for you to leave and never come back. Well, well Chloe, we both know that's not possible. I would like to end this now. Dr. Park sighs before standing up and walking towards the cell door. Okay, if that's what you want, we'll end the interview here. Good riddance. End of log. Interviews with SCP-6113-3 pertaining to SCP-6113 will continue to be postponed. Interview log 5. Interview was conducted impromptu in her containment cell. 1805-2019. Dr. Park is allowed access to the containment cell by a guard. For fuck's sake, I said I never wanted to see you again. You know, I was like you when I was your age. Huh? I was like you when I was your age. How so? Shitty childhood. Emotionally abusive Asian parents. Lack of friends. Pressure to be what others thought was best. I lashed out too. It's, it's, it's a self-preservation tactic. You have a lot more in common than you think, Chloe. And that's only what I know from what your friend Alina's family told us. Whether you believe it or not, I am here to help you. But I can't do that if you don't cooperate with me just a little. Your situation is unfortunate, yes, but it was outside both of ours' control. And what do I have to do to be cooperative? Dr. Park proceeds to sit down at the foot of her bed. Just tell me what you want me to know. SCP... Okay, then give me a time. Whatever you need. End of log. No closing statement. Interview log six. On 0106, 2019, at 2.54 a.m., SCP-6113-3 had requested an interview with Dr. James Park as soon as possible. The interview was conducted in a standard interview room the same day at 3.10 a.m. Begin log. Dr. Park enters the interview room holding a cup of coffee, visibly disheveled and fatigued. SCP-6113-3 appears fully alert. Ugh, Jesus. Why at this hour? By all means, I don't have to talk. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What do you want to tell me? You are right. We do have a lot in common. And to be honest, you're the only person here who's shown me any... humanity. Are the other staff not kind to you? They're kind, but not human. Like you said, I'm just another number to them. 
Alex, you're the only one here who bothers to use my name. Right. Where is this going? My name is... I'm 12 years old, and I'm from SoCal. I was bullied pretty heavy in school because, well, you can guess. My only friend was Alina, and I hung out with her family a lot. They took me to their lake house in Minnesota every summer, and it was the only time I ever truly felt free. My parents were so fucking shitty, it's unbelievable. They wanted me to be a boy. They wanted me to go to college and study XYZ major. I had to do this. I had to do that. Nothing could be said nicely. It was always shouting. And then one day, they found a fucking skirt I bought from Hot Topic. And th and that's when I truly, I truly fucking knew that they didn't give two shits about me. I, I, I. Oh, oh shit. I'm so sorry that it happened to you. <laughs> Um, uh, here. Dr. Park procures a box of tissues and places it by SCP-6113-3. SCP-6113-3 does not acknowledge the jester. It was very brave of you to tell me all of this, and I'm glad you trusted me with it. Data omitted for brevity. End log. After being consoled by Dr. Park, SCP-6113-3 was led back to her containment cell. She was observed to be seemingly calmer and more content. Interview Log 7 Interview requested by SCP-6113-3 Interview lasted approximately two hours. Begin Log 07-06-2019 Dr. Park enters the interview room. Hi, Hi, James, look, just, uh, please fucking forget everything I told you, okay? I think, I think that would be better for the both of us. Well, why is that? It's a, it's a, it's a bad habit. I, I tend to info dump when some adult shows me basic kindness. You know there's no shame in that, right? I know, I know, it's just embarrassing. I did say we have a lot in common. I do that too, sometimes. Figures. I'm sorry? I mean, look at you. I could sense trauma on you a mile away. Well, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you still haven't told me. About what? About how much we have in common. That includes trauma. Uh, well, well, I... Come on! I info-dumped my traumatic backstory to you. It's only fair you do the same. Okay, fine. But you should know this is crossing into some unethical territory here. Fine by me. Now tell me it all. I'm Dr. James Park. 26 years old. Nerd... Sorry, sorry, go on. All right. Most of my life was spent trying to appease my parents. I spent all my time studying or doing some extracurricular they demanded at the time. Never really had a social life because I always had my face buried in a damn book. And yet no matter what, it was never enough for them. My sisters were always somehow better than me. <laughs> Pissed the hell out of me. All the studying paid off, though, because I got the most prestigious job out of anyone in my family. Want to know what the problem is? 
What? I can't even tell them about it. Damn. <laughs> Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> to not live up to what everyone expects of you while they simultaneously don't give a shit about what you want. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> yeah. Data omitted for brevity. SCP-6113-3 is laughing at a story about SCP-6113's trauma. Dr. Park is softly laughing. The laughter dies down. <laughs> Your mom was really that much of an idiot? Yeah. Couldn't fucking accept it was her own fault. God, she was such a narcissistic bitch. Hey. And can oh Jesus, can I ask a weird question? I'm I'm sorry. It's just say it already, James. Okay, okay. How did you No. No? But you are a girl. This isn't a question about the lake, right? No, no. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious. That's all. Okay. Well, I, I knew long before any spirit or lake told me so. Sites like Tumblr kind of churn you queer. <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. I just learned the words from there. But I mean, I don't know, man. Even before that, girls to me just felt better in every way. They were prettier. They were cuter. They got to like the color pink and all that shit, you know? <laughs> I, I, I remember being so depressed that I just can't be a girl. My aunties always said I'm such a ladies man, and it made me so uncomfortable. I didn't want to be a ladies man. I wanted to be a girl that loves girls. But no, girls can't love girls, is what my mom said. <laughs> and that, and that fellas is called gender fucking dysphoria. It's so much fun. You should try it someday. <laughs> but, I, I mean, yeah, that, that's just me, though. Not every trans person feels like that. Huh. So, so it's an envy thing for you. Yeah, g gender envy's a thing, apparently. And when your parents found your skirt, they, yeah, they, they kicked me out. Yes, absolutely, correct. You win $100. Right, again, sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I'm the bright side, at least I get shelter and three meals a day. On the not-so-bright side, you guys did rip me from my only friend and family and erase their memories, but, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> oh, wow. We have been talking for two hours. I gotta go, Cole. Loser, can't even sit down and talk to your prisoner for a few more minutes. I'm kidding. You heard me talk enough already. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the talk, Chloe. It was nice getting to know you. Jesus, James, you sound like we're never going to see each other again. Well, 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 I... What are you doing? You have somewhere to go. Right. Dr. Park proceeds to exit the interview room, but stops when cut off by SCP-6113-3. Wait! Yes, Chloe? Um, would next week be good? Yeah, we can do this again next week. Cool. Okay, uh, bye then. Goodbye, Chloe. End log. Weekly interviews have been scheduled with SCP-6113-3, questions pertaining to SCP-6113 are indefinitely postponed. Interview Logs 8-20 through 20, Summary 
Interviews 8 through 20 have been omitted for brevity. Full interview logs are available by request and are subject to approval by Dr. James Park. <laughs> On 01-09-2019, the following Ethics Committee memo was sent to Dr. James Park. Ethics Committee memo to Dr. James Park from Ethics Committee Liaison, Jeremiah Kanyarian. Subject SCP-6113 Project. Dr. Park, we've been made aware of your weekly interviews with SCP-6113-3. This gathering of information is with a doubt imperative to SCP-6113 containment efforts. However, it is of this committee's opinion that your interviews with SCP-6113-3's number and unnecessary excess without any significant progress made towards containment. We ought to remind you that the separation between object and researcher is an important one. Please remember your duties as a senior researcher or a full investigation of your actions with the Foundation will be conducted with possible disciplinary measures. Interview Log 21. Scheduled Interview. Begin Log 06-09-2019. Dr. Park enters the interview room. What's up, James? Hi. How are you? Eh, could be better. Could be not trapped in here. Oh, speaking of that, James, 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 you have got to get a different person to bring me to the courtyard. That Howard guy is so dull and bland. He makes flour look like a spice. <laughs> okay. Get Howard away from me, James. He is so boring. Will do. Is something wrong? Huh? What? No, no, it's it's fine. James. It's been like three months. I can tell when something's on your mind. You get like this blank expression staring off into space. <sighs> Look, I'm I'm being pressured by my superiors. Uh-huh. I'm I'm going to have to ask you about dash one and dash two. Wow. So you get to know me, and then you go back to using me for information. I see how it is. Oi, I have a job here. Unfortunately, I'm not being paid to talk with you all day. And why should I help you anyway? Like, if what you said is true, you're just going to stop people from using it, right? I don't want to do that. It helped me. It can help others like me. That is a good point. I'm not helping y'all find it. Huh. Think about it this way. If word gets out about a lake that helps trans people, a bunch of horrible transphobes would flock to it, right? Right? If you tell us what you know, yes, we would have to contain it. But that doesn't mean we can't not have anyone use it. We could protect those who do use it. I'm, I'm the leader of this entire project anyway. I'm sure I could organize something. Why me, though? You've talked to, like, hundreds of other people about the lake. Why is my information important? 
is the only resource we have. The only one we didn't amnesticize. God. You guys really do wipe everyone's memories, don't you? Please, Chloe. We need to find Dash, too. Okay. I'll, I'll help you. But you need to give me time. That's quite all right. And I swear to God, James, if you're really just using me, I'll stab you in the fucking back. Okay? Yep, that's fair. Talk about something else now? Data omitted for brevity. End log. Request for increased security for SCP-6113-3. Denied by Dr. James Park. Interview log 22. SCP-6113-3 stated she was prepared for an interview. Begin log 1709-2019. Dr. Park enters the interview room. So you're ready, Chloe? Eh, you can say that. I probably don't want you to get, like, fired or anything. Then you do understand I have to remain professional, right? Yeah. All right. This is interview log 22 with SCP-6113-3. Date is September 17th, 2019. Time is 1.04 p.m. Now. You were one of SCP-6113-1 subjects, correct? Yes. Can you tell me what happened when it appeared to you? Well, um, after that happened... Sorry to interrupt. Please describe what that was. For the record right um after my parents kicked me out it kind of just appeared to me i don't know i was kind of just like walking down my street there was no one around most people were sleeping mm -hmm. go on so there was no one on the street it was like midnight or something. Obviously, I was in shock and crying and shit, but I, I looked up and, like, she was there. She? Er, Elena. Well, not like Elena. Elena, obviously, but she looked like her. I didn't see her mom or dad, not even their car. They They don't live in the same neighborhood. I didn't question it, though. Like, it was weird, obviously, but I didn't realize it at the time. And and suddenly we were talking and walking. I, I stopped crying. We, we talked about, you know, makeup and shit. What, whatever teenage girls talk about. Didn't even realize it, but there we were at their lake house. Do you mind telling me what it looked like? I... I don't remember. That's okay. So you're at the lake, and then what? We just sat at the edge of the lake and talked for like hours. I swear, I watched the moon set talked and talked and talked about what you know her, her family our vacations together shit only her and I knew D didn't even realize it wasn't her I knew all of it without asking you right 
and she brought it up. Brought what up? You know, transitioning, that, that sort of thing. What kind of things? Like clothes I wanted to wear. HRT, name changes, surgery, all that jazz. And how'd that make you feel? Nervous? Uncomfortable? I kind of forgot that I was just kicked out. I even told her that. Right? What happened after that? She took me in this big, warm hug. It, it was like 30 degrees, and she was warm. Told me everything was going to be all right and all. She said she loved me, and she'd pick me up soon. Huh. And she told me to look in Blake, and I mean, yeah, you probably know what happened from there. Well, say, say it anyway, for the records. Okay, well, I, I stood up and looked in the water. I'm like, dude, it was weird. I saw myself turning into gr a girl. Me, a girl, like, holy shit. I just, I kind of just got on my knees and started crying. Then, then Alina just grabbed me by the shoulders and picked me up and said we had to go. So we walked away and suddenly I was back on my home street. Not, not even at the end of the block. She said she had to go, but that she'd be back. So we hugged and said bye and then she was gone. You weren't confused or anything? Of course I was. All of this was confusing. I was angry, depressed. I suddenly had a girl's body. I was euphoric, though. I called Alina and told her everything. Her and her parents came to pick me up. And, and well, then we went to the hospital. You know what happened then? How did they react? Wouldn't you know? Please, SC. Please just tell me if you're comfortable. Okay. They, they were furious at my parents, mostly. And then they noticed I looked different. Smaller shoulders, big hips. My clothes not really fitting me anymore. Chalked it up to puberty. Alina didn't even remember what just happened. Thought I was so depressed I was hallucinating or something. I don't know. When she gave me a hug, though, she just didn't feel as warm. The real kicker, though, is when I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's when they took me to the hospital. Thank you for the testimony. We'll talk more about this later. Is there anything else you would like to state? Um, no, that's it. Okay, then. Uh, James? Yes? The remaining of the data was expunged. End log. Interview 22 continued for approximately one hour after the log's conclusion. However, this portion of the recording was expunged by Dr. James Park. Ethics Committee Memo 2 Date 1809-2019 To Dr. James Park From Ethics Committee Liaison Jeremiah Kanyeran Subject SCP-6113-3 Interview Log 22 Dr. Park, we've been made aware of your expungement of data from SCP-6113-3 
Dash 3's 20-second interview. As the interview transcript and audio and visual content is unlikely to contain any sort of metacognito or info hazard, expungement is highly unnecessary. For now, we have not yet chosen to contact Reza about storing, restoring the expunged data. However, we cannot let this go unreprimanded. As of 1809-2019, you have been placed under probation. We will be conducting a full investigation of your actions with the Foundation. You will continue your duties as SCP-6113 Senior Researcher. Any faults found in your employment history or further actions inconsistent with Foundation policy will lead to disciplinary action up to and including termination of contract. I advise you to remember your duties, James. Ethics Committee Liaison, Jeremiah Kanyeron, signing off. Interview Log 23 SCP-6113-3 requested several times between interviews to meet with Dr. James Park. All requests were denied by Dr. Park until this interview. Begin Log 25 2019 Dr. Park enters the interview room carrying a small bag. Dude, wh where the hell have you been? Hi. Hi? It's been almost a month. Look, it's been rough. Remember what I said? If you use me for information, I'd stab you in the back? Please... SCP-6113-3, calm down. SCP-6113-3, you did not just call me that. I swear to God, James, this isn't funny. I'm on probation-3, okay? Probation? Yeah, probation. I could lose my job if I'm not professional about this. Now, I'm sorry I didn't meet with you, but I couldn't risk it. Risk what? Losing my job. Having to go back to my family. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. Honestly, I don't blame you for that reaction. I really am sorry, though. It's fine. Right. Well, what's up with you, nerd? Not much, really. Unfortunately, your testimony doesn't exactly help us find the lake. Bummer. I know, right? Oh, that reminds me. At this time, Dr. Park is seen rummaging through the bag for a few moments. What you got there, buddy? To show you that I really am sorry, I got you something. Dr. Park produces a package of skirts in its original plastic packaging, typically worn by preteens. Oh, well, James, you shouldn't have. SCP-6113-3 examines the skirts for a few moments. Really, James, you shouldn't have. I know, it's not a lot. And I, I had to guess your size, but you can wear them with your uniform. <laughs> I know skirts might carry a bad memory for you, but I think it'd be, I don't know, nice to reclaim them for yourself. 
Right. Because if I didn't want to wear skirts now, uh, because my parents kicked me out for having one, I'd certainly wear them here. Oh. Well. You don't have to wear them if you don't want to. No, no, I'm kidding. I like them. Thank you, James. Little Caribou Lake. I'm sorry? Little Caribou Lake. That's where Alina's lake house is. That's where she brought me every summer. That's where... That's where it brought me. Oh my god. Yeah. James, I trust you. You said if I told you where it is, you would protect those it brings. You would let them use it. James, you have to promise me. I don't want to be the reason no one can transition with it anymore. I promise. Okay, James. Thanks. I, I'm sorry. I have to go. I need to... Jesus, I am so sorry. It's alright. I get it. I'll be fine. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you soon, okay? Okay. End of log. SCP-6113-3 was seen wearing various skirts around Site-17 through the next week. Addendum 6113-3.15 O5 Council Proposal On 10-25-2019, the following proposal was submitted to the O5 Council by Dr. James Park. On 04-11-2019, the proposal was voted on. O5 Council Proposal Summary Directive Statement. Declassify SCP-6113 and use its anomalous properties to the benefit of the global transgender population. Dr. James Park, SCP-6113, Senior Researcher, Site 17. Proposed Measures. Cease all location and containment efforts of SCP-6113. Allow SCP-6113 to establish itself as a new status quo without foundation intervention. Immediately amnestize and release SCP-6113-3 in accordance with the Reintegration Committee. Council Vote Summary 05-1 Nay 05-2 Nay. O5-3. Nay. O5-4. Nay. O5-5. Nay. O5-6. Nay. O5-7. Nay. O5-8. Nay. O5-9, nay. O5-10, nay. O5-11, nay. O5-12, nay. O5-13, nay. Status unanimously denied. SCP-6113 is to remain classified and current containment procedures are to be carried out as normal. Interview Log 24 Conducted Impromptu in SCP-6113-3's containment cell. Begin log. 
2019. Dr. Park is allowed access for the containment cell by a guard. Oh! Hi, James. You know, these skirts you gave me fit pretty well. I've been wearing them around. You noticed, right? James? Everything all right there? Hello? You just gonna keep looking at me like that, dude? I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Uh, what's happening? You good? I couldn't... I couldn't keep my promise. It wasn't up to me. James, what are you talking about? The lake... They're going to find the lake, and they're going to contain it. James, th this isn't funny. Tell me you're lying. You're lying, right? I'm sorry. So you... You spent all that time, months, talking to me? You got me to trust you. And, and then you lied to me. You lied? What's next? Are you going to toss me to the side? There was nothing I could do. Bullshit! There was everything you could have done! You... You could have... You could have left me the fuck alone! Like I asked you to. Shit! I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. I did use you. I, I used you like everyone else in your life, and I'm sorry. It's unforgivable. Nothing I could do would would, would ever make up for it. <laughs> Dr. Park collapses onto the foot of SCP-6113-3's bed. They spend approximately 30 minutes in distress until the pair calm down and are silent for several minutes. So... What now? It'll be contained within the next week. As far as we know, just the presence of the Foundation will deter Dash One. It won't come, and if it does, well... I'm so sorry. The two sit in silence for a few more minutes. SCP-6113-3 moves closer to Dr. Park until they are sitting next to each other. SCP-6113-3 then hugs Dr. Park. Dr. Park is caught off guard, however, and he is hesitant. Eventually, he reciprocates the hug. They sit like this for a few minutes before separating, composing themselves for a moment. Dr. Park then stands up. Will you be okay? Yeah. I'll be fine. You still have a job, after all. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Don't worry. Whatever you say, James. End of log. There is no closing statement. I believe you are all starting to be able to see the ethics concerns that were brought up between SCP-6113-3 and Dr. James Park. 
The story isn't over here, though. Recent changes have been made to this file. Under special containment procedures, a note has been added. SCP-6113-3 is kept in a standard humanoid containment cell at Site-17. The senior researcher for SCP-6113, currently Dr. Brandon Fisher, is to act as SCP-6113-3's social worker, responsible for SCP-6113-3's well-being as well as their normal duties. SCP-6113-3 is to receive a standard education by Foundation educators up until the 12th grade. While SCP-6113-3 is non-anomalous, standard humanoid containment protocol is in effect. She is only to be referred to as SCP-6113-3. Requests for personal items and containment modifications within reason may also be granted upon approval from the SCP-6113 senior researcher. In addition to the previously covered requests, a pad of paper and various writing utensils at first denied was then granted. Once SCP-6113-3 reaches the age of 18 in 2025, preparations are to be made for her amnestization and release in accordance with the Reintegration Committee. By order of the Ethics Subcommittee for Humanoid Entities, Dr. James Park contract with the Foundation is terminated, and upon his return, prohibited from any and all contact with SCP-6113-3 and the SCP-6113 project. He is to be screened for any mimetic and cognito hazards before his amnestization and release into civilian life. The description has no changes. There are no changes on addendums 3.1 through 16. Addendum 6. 113-3.17 Ethics Committee Injunction On 06-11-2019, the following was sent to Dr. James Park in response to the events of Interview 24. Official Ethics Committee Injunction 06-11-2019 to Dr. James Park, from Ethics Committee Liaison Jeremiah Chimerion, CC Dr. Brandon Fisher, Subject SCP-6113-3. <laughs> Dr. Park, the development of the SCP-6113 project has piqued the interest of this committee as of late. With SCP-6113-3's unique containment situation, one should take care when acquiring information from her as to not cross the boundary between object and researcher. While your methods have no doubt proved a Effective in the containment of SCP-6113, it is of this committee's opinion that you have acted unethically in growing too comfortable with SCP-6113-3. Your continued disregard for the ethical integrity of your position has forced us to take disciplinary action out of an abundance of caution. Effective immediately, you are removed from the SCP-6113 project and demoted to Level 2 Assistant Researcher. You are to be transferred to Site-06-3 immediately. 
you are also barred from any and all contact with SCP-6113-3. If found in violation of this injunction, your contract with the Foundation is to be terminated, and you will be amnesticized. SCP-6113 Assistant Researcher Dr. Brandon Fisher is promoted to the position of SCP-6113 Senior Researcher. Ethics Committee Liaison Jeremiah Chimerion signing off. Addendum 6113-3.18 Incident 6113-306-11-2019 On the 6th of November, 2019, at 11.42 a.m., two guards arrived at Dr. James Park's office to escort him off the premises. Dr. Park had, presumably, already read the injunction at this point. The office door, however, was locked and the blinds closed. As they attempted to negotiate with Dr. Park, they reportedly heard crying and sounds of emotional distress inside his office. Additional security personnel were summoned, and preparations were made in the event Dr. Park turned violent. Dr. Park was non-cooperative with orders to open the door. Threats of termination were met with silence. Security personnel were ordered to forcibly enter his office. Upon entrance, Dr. Park was not to be found inside his office. Notably, the only exit from his office is through the door that was breached. Dr. Park's personal effects were left intact, and his computer terminal was left logged in. There was no sign of a struggle. Seen below is the email his terminal was open to. Site 17 was not put on lockdown. However, all security personnel were ordered to search for and detain Dr. Park immediately. After approximately four hours at 4.45 p.m., the order was lifted. Search efforts for Dr. Park was initiated for all Foundation agents and applicable mobile task forces within a 100-kilometer radius. As of writing, Dr. Park has not been found. The email was to senior researcher Brandon Fisher. She said it was envy. Interview Log 25 SCP-6113-3 Interviewer Dr. Brandon Fisher Earliest interview after Incident 6113-30611-2019 Begin Log 0811-2019 Dr. Fisher enters the interview room. Hello, SCP-6113-3. My name is Dr. Brandon Fisher. Uh, hi? What are you here for? I'm the senior researcher for the SCP-6113 project. I'll be taking care of you from now on. What happened to James? I'm afraid I cannot. What happened to James? He's been relieved of his duties due to a few errors on his part. So you fired him? Yes, if that's how you would like to put it, SCP. Don't call me that. What? I said, don't call me that. I'm afraid I will have to refer to you how I am told to refer to you. You motherfuckers! It's because of that, isn't it? SCP-6113-3, please calm down. Y'all couldn't accept that he treated me like a person. He called me <laughs> instead of a bunch of fucking numbers. Listen, if you want me to cooperate, bring James back. 
I'm afraid I cannot do that. Then you won't get anything from me. SCP-6113-3 SCP-6113-3 Fuck you. This interview is over. End log. Dr. Fisher has requested psychotherapy for SCP-6113-3. More changes have been made to this file. Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-6113-1 is not possible at the present moment. Containment efforts of SCP-6113 are primarily focused on the suppression of information surrounding it. Along with SCP-6113-2's containment procedures, the following special containment procedures for SCP-6113 have been implemented. Spread disinformation surrounding SCP-6113-1 through multiple platforms by Foundation web crawlers and planted agents in an attempt to discredit any reported sightings and transition events. The other containment procedures have remained the same. These procedures have been effective at maintaining global normality. However, SCP-6113-1 continues to affect subjects at an increasing average rate of 8 subjects per 7 days. The number of subjects affected by SCP-6113 total over 315 as of 10-1-2020. The Department of Thaumaturgy is currently developing a permanent containment method for SCP-6113-1. Testing on D-Class personnel and locating, tracking, and studying SCP-6113-1 is not possible at the present moment. An updated description of SCP-6113-1. SCP-6113-1's true physical form is a humanoid being made of solid orange light. Its estimated height is 180 centimeters, and it glows at approximately 12 lumens. Updated special containment procedures for SCP-6113-2. Local properties have been cleared from the area, and a perimeter of chain-link fences one kilometer from the edge of the lake has been established. No fewer than two guards every four kilometers are to continuously patrol the perimeter to deter trespassers. Trespassers are to be detained and turned over to local law enforcement, given Class A amnestics if necessary. A cover story involving a drowning risk has been disseminated through local media. Provisional Site 15 has been established within the perimeter at the lake's eastern edge, disguised as an abandoned boat rental building. CCTV cameras, disguised as wildlife cameras, have been attached to nearby trees, and their footage routed to and recorded at Provisional Site 15. Two guards are to be stationed there at all times to monitor CCTV footage. If SCP-6113-1 or any subjects are seen at or near SCP-6113-2, Mobile Task Force Lambda-69 the six color crusaders are to respond and contain SCP-6113-1 and detain any subjects. Updated description for SCP-6113-2. SCP-6113-2 is Little Caribou Lake in Minnesota State. Coordinates 48 degrees north 90 degrees west. 
despite no subjects arriving at SCP-6113-2 and its containment area, subjects continue to undergo transition offense globally. Research into if SCP-6113-2's anomalous properties even exist is underway. Warning, the following file is level 4 slash 6113-3 classified. Any attempt to access this file without the proper authorization will be logged and will lead to immediate disciplinary action. SCP-6113-3 Containment Class Esoteric Secondary Class Uncontained Special Containment Procedures SCP-6113-3 has escaped containment. Assisted by SCP-6113-1 and, presumably, Dr. James Park. Mobile Task Force Lambda-69, the Six Color Crusaders, is to locate SCP-6113-3 and bring her into containment where she will be held until the age of 18 in 2025. If such a time passes without recontainment, she is instead to be located and given Class C and G amnestics. Dr. James Park is to be terminated as soon as possible. Amnestization and planting false memories in SCP-6113-3 to remove any knowledge of Dr. James Park pending Ethics Committee approval. As of writing SCP-6113-3 and Dr. James Park have not been located. There have been no changes to description. There have been no changes to addendums 1 through 19. Addendum 6113-3.20 Containment Breach 6113-3-1511-2019 Report Containment Breach Report 1511-2019 Site 17 SCPs Involved SCP-6113-1 SCP-6113-3 Mobile Task Forces Involved Lambda-69 The Six Color Crusaders Personnel involved, various Site-17 security personnel, Dr. Brandon Fisher. Others involved, Dr. James Park, presumably. On 15-11-2019, at 10.26 p.m., SCP-6113-1 appeared unnoticed in an unpopulated portion of Site-17, disguised as Site Director Thomas Graham. SCP-6113-1 made its way to Dr. Brandon Fisher's office, mimicking his behavior perfectly so as to remain undetected. Still disguised, SCP-6113-1 then requested Dr. Fisher's Level 3 access card for security purposes. Despite the suspect reasoning, Dr. Fisher granted SCP-6113-1 his access card before returning to his terminal. SCP-6113-1 then left Dr. Fisher's office and walked towards the low-security humanoid containment wing. When alone, SCP-6113-1 took the opportunity to disguise as Dr. Fisher. This was captured on surveillance cameras and security personnel were alerted. At 11.03 p.m., a full site lockdown was ordered by Site Director Graham. Mobile Task Force Lambda-69, the Six Color Crusaders, was deployed, with an ETA of approximately 10 minutes. SCP-6113-1, still disguised, arrived in the humanoid containment wing and requested to meet with SCP-6113-3. Approximately half the guards stationed in this wing were absent, attending to the lockdown order. Again, despite the suspicious circumstances, the guard allowed SCP-6113-1 into SCP-6113-3's containment cell. This was captured on surveillance cameras. 
Upon entrance, SCP-6113-3 reacted with alarm and anger, shouting several explicitives. SCP-6113 then disappeared for a few moments before returning with a woman, presumably Dr. James Park. SCP-6113-3 was shocked, yet calmed immediately. The following exchange is logged below. Chains? It's Janet now. Holy fucking shit, your egg cracked! No thanks to you. SCP-6113-3 runs up and hugs Dr. Park. I missed you so much, dickhead. Dr. Park hugs her tightly. I missed you too, dipshit. Ha! I think I used to curse at me! <laughs> so what's the plan? We break out, with Dash One's help. Then, for once in my life, I've got nothing planned after that. SCP-6113-3 grabs Dr. Park's hand. Well, <laughs> lead the way! SCP-6113-3 and Dr. James Park both left two documents and three labeled photos on the containment cell's desk. The group left the containment cell as security personnel approached their position. SCP-6113-1, SCP-6113-3, and Dr. James Park then sprinted in the opposite direction. At 11.12 p.m., MTF Lamba-69 arrived in the humanoid containment wing in front of the group. MTF Lambda-69 engaged the group, firing non-lethal ammunition. All projectiles, however, harmlessly collided with their bodies. SCP-6113-3 and Dr. James Park exhibited no pain response. One member of MTF Lambda-69 then vocalized several thaumaturgical incantations in an attempt to disable SCP-6113-1's known abilities. These incantations were only successful in removing SCP-6113-1's ability to disguise, revealing its true orange light form. With SCP-6113-1's assistance, the group disappeared from view. At 11.15 p.m., Site-17's lockdown order was lifted, and search efforts for SCP-6113-1, SCP-6113-3, and Dr. James Park were initiated for all Foundation agents and applicable mobile task forces within a 100-kilometer radius. At 4 a.m., the search order was lifted. Document SCP-6113-3.1 The Letter from Dr. Janet Park. To whom it may concern, to whom it may concern, I am thankful for my time with the Foundation. I have enjoyed working on the SCP-6113 project immensely. However, I cannot, in good conscience, continue my employment. The reason? SCP-6113-3. It was envy, she said, that the idea of being a girl for her was more desirable than actually being a boy. I didn't understand it at the time. Needless to say, my desire to be her mother shadowed my judgment. For the better. I know I've been compromised. You will search for an attempt to terminate me. For once, I don't care. I love her and I will do anything to protect her. That includes what I've just done. 
<laughs> Forgive me, but I did what I thought was necessary, what I thought was ethical. I expect to see you soon. And again, thank you, truly, for the opportunity. Janet Park. Document SCP-6113-3.2. A handwritten note. Dear Foundation, Dare I say it? But maybe taking a little abused trans girl hostage wasn't the best decision you've ever made. Sure, life could have been worse for me, but it could have also been better. Who knows? You never even gave me the chance. I know one thing for certain, though. I never had a family, and the Foundation couldn't give me one. Wouldn't even let me have one. So I had to find my own. Janet. <laughs> Don't try looking for me and her. Y'all may be powerful, but I have an invincible spirit thing protecting me. Don't you dare touch Alina again, or I swear to God, I'll make y'all bleed. There isn't much more for me to say other than that. Of course. With love. Fuck you. Chloe Park. Along with the notes were three photos of SCP-6113-2 attached below. Thank you everyone for watching this very long video um, on a very heavy topic. Uh, I came across SCP-6113 watching the Site42 YouTube channel and uh, Sherman briefly mentioned it. I went down a rabbit hole and read the entire thing and was immediately like, okay, this is going to be my first foray into voice acting on my channel. I, I am an actress already. Uh, I haven't done it professionally in quite a while. But it is... This is a absolutely heart-wrenching story. I cried so hard when I read this story for the first time. Part of the reason I wanted to record this is because one, there's only one other uh, recording I could find on YouTube of this. And I, I have multiple people in my life who have... Uh, reading difficulties and this is a very long article it is over 10,000 words and I really needed them to be able to hear this article and appreciate it like I said it is over 10,000 words and it is every word of it is absolutely beautiful I, I did cut out a lot of the repeating stuff only for the most part only reading the updates on the updated files I heavily heavily recommend that you read this article for yourself. It's a very good experience reading the article as well. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, this article was written by, uh, I have no idea if I'm saying it right, but Dr. Asteria. Uh, it is an amazing article written by an amazing writer she has several other stories and files on the scp wiki and i highly highly encourage you to check her out this was her very first story on like her very first scp this was the first thing she ever put on the scp wiki and i'm beyond impressed and beyond amazed. Um, I, I, I also find it amazing that she managed to get uh, the SCP-113 uh, tag uh, when, like, because of SCP-113. I just find that amazing. Amazing, amazing writer. As a writer myself, I 
am absolutely blown away. I love this story. It's very different from a lot of SCPs, but not in a bad way. And I adored every single second of this. I hope to do this again in the future, actually. I very much so enjoyed this. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. If you want to see more things like this in the future, please do let me know.